Welcome to video number three of a series of short lectures entitled The End of the Calories In, Calories Out Theory. My name is Francisco Arencibi Albite. I am an associate professor of human physiology at the Universidad del Sagrado Corazón in San Juan, Puerto Rico. The aim of this lecture is to demonstrate that the coexistence of caloric imbalance with a steady mass does not represent a violation of the first law of thermodynamics. According to the calories in, calories out theory, in steady weight populations, the calories out should be about equal to the calories in. However, in many cases, in steady weight subjects, when the expended energy is precisely measured with techniques such as doubly labeled water, and the energy intake is measured by self-reported methods, these subjects appear to be under a substantial negative energy balance, which again, according to the calories in, calories out theory, is impossible since the study participants are weight stable. As an example of this problem, here I show the work of Mahavir and colleagues and the work of Suvar and colleagues, which illustrate steady weight populations under a persistent negative energy deficit that exceeds the mark of 800 calories per day. The predominant interpretation of this finding is that the participants must be under-reporting the actual energy intake, since the calories in, calories out theory is believed to be a corollary of the first law of thermodynamics. Contrary to this popular interpretation, in this lecture I will show that the first law of thermodynamics allows for the coincidence of caloric imbalance with a steady mass. Consequently, it is incorrect to claim that the calories in, calories out theory follows from the first law of thermodynamics, as is often done in the nutritional science literature. In the next two slides, I will briefly explain what is thermodynamics, what are thermodynamical systems, and I will provide a definition of the first law of thermodynamics. Thermodynamics is the branch of physics that deals with the relationships between heat, temperature, work, and energy. In its study, we encountered three types of systems. Closed systems, which are systems that only exchange energy with its surroundings, but not mass. Open systems, which exchange energy and mass with its surroundings. And finally, isolated systems that exchange neither energy nor mass with its surroundings. In this context, the system is that part of the universe that we want to understand, while the surroundings is everything else that is not part of the system. It is often said that energy is always conserved, yet it turns out that the principle of energy conservation is not always true. For instance, it is well known that the cosmos is expanding, and so light waves traveling through it also expand, which means that the light wave energy is decreasing since its wavelength is expanding, an idea that is clearly summarized by Planck's equation. This begs the question, where do we find the lost energy? The answer is that the lost energy is nowhere to be found. It simply has disappeared, that is, energy is not being conserved at the cosmic scale. This phenomenon is known as cosmological redshift. Here on Earth, nonetheless, all thermodynamical systems operate under conditions where energy is always conserved, and thus the change in internal energy of the system delta E must be equal to the difference between the net absorbed energy and the net expended energy. This general idea, which is an application of the principle of energy conservation, it is known as the first law of thermodynamics. In a more standard notation, people often write the first law of thermodynamics as applied to a general closed system, where delta U is the change in internal energy of the system, Q is the net heat energy transfer, that is, Q is positive if the system is absorbing heat, but negative if it's losing heat. W is the mechanical work, which is positive when the system performs work on the surroundings, but negative when the surroundings perform work on the system. This sign convention also applies to open systems. In conclusion, 
for any closed or open system, the first law of thermodynamics posits that the change in internal energy delta E results from the difference between the net energy input and the net energy output. It is important to remark that the first law of thermodynamics makes no claim on how the change in internal energy delta E affects the mass of the system. In the next two slides, I provide numerical examples that illustrate this important point. A closed system, by definition, only exchanges energy with its surroundings, but not mass. The system's mass is therefore constant for all cases of energy imbalance. That is, the behavior of a closed system is not in agreement with the calories in, calories out theory. For example, consider the following closed system. One kilogram of water inside a closed container at standard atmospheric pressure, as shown. Next, suppose that heat is supplied such that all the liquid water becomes steam. Let us now calculate the energy balance of the system. At standard atmospheric pressure, the amount of heat required to convert one kilogram of liquid water to steam is about 540 calories. On the other hand, as the system is converted to steam, the atmospheric pressure remains constant, thus the work done by the system is around 40 calories. Hence, the energy balance of the system is positive with a magnitude of 500 calories. Which means that at standard atmospheric pressure, for one kilogram of water to become one kilogram of steam, it needs to absorb about 500 calories. In conclusion, it follows from this example that the occurrence of a positive energy balance with no change in the system mass is not a violation of the first law of thermodynamics. The next example illustrates that in open system it is possible for energy and mass balances to manifest the similar directions. That is, the behavior of an open system is not always in agreement with the calories in, calories out theory. As an example of an open system, consider 50 kilograms of water at 25 degrees Celsius inside an open container under standard atmospheric pressure, as shown. Next, 20 kilograms of water at 10 degrees Celsius are added to the container after the removal of 20 kilograms of water. This leaves the mass of the system unaltered, but reduces its temperature to 19 degrees. Let us now calculate the energy balance. The system is releasing 300 calories of heat to the surroundings. At the same time, the surroundings perform a very small amount of work on the system of about 1.6 times 10 to the minus 3 calories. Therefore, the energy balance is negative with a magnitude of about 289.99 calories, while the mass of the system remains unchanged. In conclusion, it follows from this example that the occurrence of a negative energy balance with no change in the system mass is not a violation of the first law of thermodynamics. I now list the conclusions that follow from the previous discussion. First, according to the first law of thermodynamics, in a closed system, all cases of caloric imbalance always coincide with a constant system's mass. Thus, the thermodynamical behavior of a closed system is not in agreement with the calories in, calories out theory. Second, according to the first law of thermodynamics, in an open system, a state of caloric imbalance can coincide with a constant system's mass. Hence, the thermodynamical behavior of open systems is not always in agreement with the calories in, calories out theory. And finally, the coexistence of caloric imbalance with a steady mass does not represent a violation of the first law of thermodynamics. Therefore, the finding of caloric imbalance in steady weight populations is not a challenge to the first law of thermodynamics. To finish this presentation, I would like to emphasize the key points of lectures 1 and 2 and this lecture. In lecture 1, we learn that by defining the VO2 deviation, it is possible to divide all cases of energy balance into three mutually exclusive categories. Type 1 energy balance, 
where the average VO2 deviation is negative, type 2 energy balance, where the average VO2 deviation is zero, and type 3 energy balance, where the average VO2 deviation is positive. In lecture 2, we learn about the body composition equations, which indicate that during prolonged wave stability, body composition is also stable. Consequently, if the calories in are on average equal to the calories out, then fat mass and fat free mass are both stable. In the present lecture, we have learned that the coexistence of caloric imbalance with a steady mass does not represent a violation of the first law of thermodynamics. Consequently, the finding of caloric imbalance in steady weight populations is not a challenge to the first law of thermodynamics. As we will see in the final lecture, analytical application of these important facts will render the calories in calories out theory as an impossible problem. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next lecture.